Hello again, Corey Wakefield here with another header and footer builder video for you guys, this time discussing drop downs, modals, and off canvas areas. We um, have a little bit of rain here in Texas this afternoon, so I hope that not too much of that is bleeding through on the mic, but a little ambiance is always nice, am I right? So we, uh, we wanted to group these three pieces together because while they're extremely flexible, and they're used in a lot of different elements throughout the builder, they're very simple to set up. So we're just gonna take some time to run through each one, discuss some settings, um, and also talk about a couple little nuances and tricks that you might wanna know about each one. So we'll jump right in here on the drop down, And when you pull this up, you can see right away that there's really not a whole lot going on. Very straightforward. Um, just about five or six boxes here of options and we will just run straight down the line. So we have our base font size, as always, our width, which can be adjusted as needed to um, fit any of your content, and then our background color. I am, uh, I'm gonna come back to this font size in one second because there is something to be aware of here. Then we have our first drop-down margin control. So this is important because, um, you know, for things like the content area and a cart, you only have one drop down, but for elements like your navigation drop down, you will have these sub menus for um, your links that are nested within the top level drop down. Now, each of those menus is positioned dynamically using a JavaScript library we've written just for these builders. But for that very first drop down, you might find that there are times you want to reposition it a little bit. For example, you know, this might work for you having it kind of right against the edge of the bar here, but there could be a time where you would like to see um, a little bit more spacing at the top um, to just move it away from the bar a second. Um, you might also want to bump it in towards the bar. Um, you could do that. And there are also times where, for example, with this toggle, if you put a little margin to the side of it, it's really going to bump this container out. And what that will do is have your drop down be repositioned towards the new side of that container. So there might be times too where you need to take advantage of using these side margins to reposition your drop down to realign with your toggle. Just a little thing to be aware of there. Then we have our uh, drop down border. I'm going to hop back over to this guy. Drop down border, pretty straightforward. Border radius. You can play with all the corners of course or just one and leave the rest you can uh, adjust your inner drop down padding for the content and then you have your drop down uh, sorry your box shadow control and uh, the box shadow is really important I find that it's a great thing to add just to offset you know the drop down from your content behind you never know on a page if the uh, area you're scrolling through is going to be really dark or saturated or just have a lot of vibrancy going on. So having a little bit of a box shadow helps offset that drop down just a bit. Very helpful. Now regarding the uh, font size, like I mentioned earlier, let me close this, open this back up, get rid of that. So regarding font size, if you are using a single dropdown, like the cart or the content area, it's perfectly fine to use any of these available units in here. If you are using a nested set of dropdowns, such as a navigation like this, one thing you will want to do is probably steer clear of using M's. Um, if you're not familiar with M's and rims, take a brief moment to just go, look up a tutorial online. They're, they're basically relative CSS units that are used for sizing um, relative to kind of the nearest font size they can find. So for example, if I set this to 1M, notice it got a little bigger there. What this is really saying is it's trying to find the nearest kind of pixel value to work off of. And it doesn't have to be a literal pixel value, um, but the closest thing that would be, since you can't set a font size on your containers, is your bar. So on this bar, notice that we have a base font size of 16. If I were to bump that down to 12, see how everything shrunk because I've also got, I've got my height set up as M's. I set up this drop down as M's if you remember. So when I adjust that font size, anything that's set up with M's is going to move with it. So I'll put that back at 16. 
come back to my layout here, inspect this guy. So when I say 1M, I'm basically just saying, you know, give me 1M of that most recent, you know, ancestor that I can find a font size for. So when I hover over this, everything is fine. Now, if I were to adjust this to some sort of fraction or even something that's bigger than one, let me just do 0 0.75. So that first menu is gonna be fine. But if I hover over and go to my sub menu, you'll notice that it's a little bit tinier and then a little bit tinier still. And what's happening here is this very first dropdown is the font size, well, all these dropdowns, the font size is 0.75 Ms. But for this first one, it's 0.75 relative to that 16 on our bar. So this is basically saying 12 pixels is my font size. What this dropdown is saying is since it's a child of this dropdown, it's like saying, give me 75% of your 12 pixels now, your other 75%. So that's why you get this kind of stair-stepping effect when you use M's like that. And it's more drastic if you use a bigger ratio. Um, it's less drastic if you use something a lot smaller, like if you were to do 0.9, you'll see that these are barely getting tinier. And of course, if you did something bigger, each one would get bigger with each successive unit. So just keep that in mind when you're using that. Um, rims are totally fine because rims are basically styling off the closest root unit they can get a font size from. So typically the HTML element. Um, so like if your base root font size was like 12 pixels, this would be like saying um, 12 pixels because this is one rim. And you'll see that each level of those drop downs is fine now because of the root. So typically, if you're doing the nested thing, pixels or rims, otherwise, M's are totally fine. And you, of course, can use um, M's or anything you would like for the width of your drop down because that's just relative to the drop down itself. So, just a few little things to keep a note there on drop downs. Next, we have our modal which we have our base font size like always. We can adjust the location of the close button if we need. So now it's over here in my top left corner. We've got the bottom corners to play with as well. You also have these close size and dimensions controls. So what that means is you're picking the size you want your close button to be, and then you're picking the dimensions you want it to overall take up. And we've got three options here. And I'll show you how that works by shrinking this down just a little bit. So notice that we have a little bit of a gutter here. And if I had enough content for this modal to scroll, because this is a completely responsive modal, you would see this X scrolling alongside the content. And that's really important because you need to always have a way for your user to be able to dismiss you know, these um, over screen bits of markup. Um, if we want to make that smaller, we can click on the dimensions here and notice what happened. Now my X is much more kind of um, placed into the corner here. There's not as much padding around it. And that's because each one of these is either increasing or decreasing that space around the X and therefore this whole gutter space as well. So this is more something to really be aware of on your mobile devices. But if you, if you don't mind a larger gutter and your content isn't getting too cramped, you can absolutely do that. And what that actually does is it makes this X um, a lot easier to get to. So like this whole area is clickable versus if I make it small, you know, I've got to really aim for that X. And you might want that too um, for a functional example. For, for instance, if you're using your modal to include some sort of opt-in form or you really don't want them to you know, escape as easily as you would like them to, um, using that smaller X you know, it's probably um, a technique you might want to explore. So just something to keep in mind there with the, uh, the dimensions control. And keep in mind, it really has the most impact on a mobile device with that gutter to the side. Then we can um, adjust the max width of our content. By default, it's just going to go full width. And it will always be vertically centered because of the way it works. When it overflows, you can scroll to it. But then you can definitely set it to whatever you need it to be to fit the content you're working with. 
Um, all of our colors can be adjusted here, so you can tweak you know, the opacity of the overlay or just change the color of it altogether. You have full control over the color of your close buttons here and your content background. And another cool trick is you might even want to make this um, transparent. And if we were to get rid of our box shadow and then you know play with the content we're using, then you've got the look of content just sitting right on the, you know, the background of your modal, which could be a full color or it could have a little transparency. It's really whatever you want. Let me add this back in. Um, we've got our content padding, a lot like the drop down, so we can adjust that as needed. We have our modal content border, so this would be a border around here. Again, a lot of cool effects you can do if you were, you know, to make your content transparent and just play with borders. You have your border radius for the content, and then your box shadow. And again, this helps to, you know, offset that content from the background if you are going for that particular look. Um, and another thing to keep in mind with your modal as well is clicking anywhere outside of this content area will dismiss it because that's kind of a, a pattern a lot of users are, are used to nowadays. They don't always think they have to hunt down an X to close things out. So it's just nice that they can interact with anything in here they need, but click right outside to close it. So clicking on our search modal, you'll see an example of um, where we've gotten rid of the um, visibleness of that content area. So you'll see if I inspect this, our content background is totally transparent. We have no box shadow over here. Um, and just for good measure, we've you know turned all of our border radiuses off, no border, no padding. So now what we have is just this search element sitting right on the background content of our modal, which has a little bit of a, uh, of a color here. Now what's really cool about this, and this is something you'll want to experiment with, but for your modal, I really like using this calc font size hack. So if you don't know about calc, I would definitely recommend going and reading up on it. It's essentially a, a native CSS function that allows you to combine um, non-like units and get measurements from it. So what this is saying is make my base font size 12 pixels plus 1.5 viewport width units. And if you don't know about the viewport width units, it's just a measure from one to a hundred of, you know, basically how wide is the viewport right now. So what that means is you'll see as I size this down, my search is constantly responsively sizing up and down with the window as I move it. And that's really important because it's a very subtle thing, but it allows you to set up your um, search once and have it work everywhere without maybe having a a really big one that you show on a desktop and then hiding that with the responsive controls and then setting up a smaller one for mobile. You can just set up um, one and then you can have your um, responsive sizing do all the quote unquote magic for you on that. And then what's cool by setting the base font size with that, you'll notice that everything else sizes down too. So we've set up our close button with M's. So this is relatively sizing up and down as the screen gets smaller and bigger. And you can appropriately use max width with M's now. For example, we can make that 14, let's make it 18. And it will always size up and down the way you want it to and work just as you would expect. So that's a really neat little trick to use. It works great on the um, the modal navigation as well, um, really anything, because that modal is full screen. So you're always taking up the full width. You don't have to worry about a, a sidebar ever coming in or kind of interfering with how that content operates. So that is the modal. And last but not least, we have the off canvas area. So what's really cool about the off canvas, similar to the modal, clicking anywhere out here will dismiss it. And it is, um, again, fully responsive. So if you are um, working with content in here and you've got, for some reason my cart's not loading there, one second. I think it's the uh, WooCommerce fragments there. Sometimes they don't want to load up. One second.
Yep, there we go. So keep in mind here that um, our off-canvas areas are totally responsive. Notice that we have all this content and we have full access to it at any part of the screen. Um, and again, it's fully responsive this way as well too. So it will shrink and expand as needed. And then the X up here is always available as we scroll up and down. So completely uh, responsively accessible, which is really nice. And let's just dig in to this off canvas area right here. So we have our base font size, like always. And for this, it is typically good to use um, a pixel value. You can, of course, experiment with M's and rims. It's just up to you. You can specify the location of the screen you want that off canvas area to come in on. And one little thing to note um, is the X will always swap sides depending on which part of the screen you're on. We have a similar close size and dimensions control like the modal. So we could adjust this, make the X a little bigger, but then make the overall dimensions a little smaller or larger. So you can just play with that gutter and make sure it fits your content well. And then you can of course specify a max width um, for your off canvas area. So it could be none, which would literally make it full width or you can give it a pixel value or anything else you want to get it just how you need. Same with the modal, we can play with our overlay background, our close button, our content background, and then we can adjust the um, border and the box shadow to that off canvas area as we need. So lots of great um, simple controls there, but a very effective element that's used all over the place throughout the builder. So, I hope you guys found this helpful and we look forward to bringing a few more videos to you all very soon.